Hello, hello, apa kabar semua? Welcome to the Virtually Peranakan Fest 2021, keeping our spirit and our culture strong. My name is Alvin Un from Peranakan Sayang, and it's my pleasure to organize this festival for you and also to be your host. We hope that this uh, two-day non-stop online festival brings entertainment, knowledge, joy and comfort in these challenging times to babas and nyonyas and for those who love the culture around the world. As we all come together to celebrate all things Peranakan. Kam siala semua datang sini sama-sama kita ya. Kita semua sama-sama happy happy wahi. Now for the second program of the day of day 1, we will go be going to Kuala Lumpur to learn more about matching of the sarong kebaya by John Ang presenting on behalf of Persatuan Peranakan Baba Nyonya Kuala Lumpur and Selangor. But before that We'll have my good friend who is now in Malacca to join me as a co-host. So please welcome my good friend, Cedric Tan. Hello, 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 semua. Ada baik. Dah makan belum? Baik, baik, ba. Yeah, would you like to... In- Bagus, ba. Would you like ah. to introduce our speaker? Well... First of all, thank you very much, yeah, Baba Elvin, for having me over here to help you, yeah. Kita just tolong tolong lah. You know, you'll be hoarse by the end of the day if you were to compare all the way to the end, yeah. So thank you very much for having me aboard, uh, up abroad, and also to um, help out in this most wonderful sharing session marathon, yeah. So I'm going to introduce to you our speaker for today. Um, he's also a representative from the Persatuan Peranakan Baba Nyonya Kuala Lumpur in Selengo. Ah, that's where I was from. Lah, eh? ah, very busy times those times. Lah. But now MCO all quite quite at home. Lah, eh? So, our Baba John Ang will be speaking on the very interesting topic uh, on matching of the Sarong Kebaya. So, the question is now, is it a matter of tradition or taste? How do you match them, yeah? So before we go into the talk itself, let me introduce Baba John Ang. So Baba John was born in the US, but he grew up in Singapore in a traditional Peranakan family. And uh, after he received his Bachelor of Arts and Master of Arts degrees in Asian Art History in the University of Michigan, he then moved to Tokyo and Taipei before settling down in Kuala Lumpur. So John is now an avid collector of Malay textiles, but also has many Peranakan sarong kebaya. Okay, besides collecting, his other passion is to share with his friends new discoveries about the history and culture of his textiles. Now, John is working on a major exhibition and catalog entitled Splendors of Malay World Textiles, which will be held in uh, Kuala Lumpur from Saturday, July the 23rd to September the 24th, 2022. Not far away, yeah? Seven months more to go. So today, John will share with us about his Peranakan family background and how it has influenced him and also shaped his views on Malay and Peranakan fashion. So that's John Ang for you. So ladies and gentlemen, without missing, wasting much time, let's bring on Baba John Ang. Mana lu, Baba John? Hello, Hello Baba. Baba. Wow, Chanti. Hello. <laughs> wow, nice How are you, Baba? Wow, Chanti. And uh, thank ah. you for letting me share my thoughts. Most welcome. So please, Baba John, the stage is all yours. Okay, so my topic today is the joy of collecting Peranakan Sarong Kabaya. And I'd like to talk to you about um, the concept of matching because when I collect, you know, I collect sarongs and I collect kabayas, but seldom I collect them as a set. I think it's only um, two incidences where I managed to collect them according to the owner's original set. So generally, most museums are kind of afraid to match it in case they match them wrongly, unless they have people, uh, older folks who kind of advise them. Then I realized also that there are certain rules and regulations stated and unstated. Um, 
that uh, are carried down through the ages that we should observe. And people who do not observe it uh, tend to uh, kind of offend people who are Puranakan. So I kind of like to touch about those today so that we know that there is uh, perhaps a standard of matching. Uh, it, it's not something you anyhow match. There, there is a certain concept. If you look at all the old books and pictures and listen to your uh, grandma or grand aunts or even great grandma when they speak about how they would match their sarong kabayas. Okay, so without much further ado, uh, we go on to the next slide. Okay. Am I on full screen? Uh, Alvin, am I on full screen? Yes, you are, Ba. Hi. Uh, Cedric, am I on full screen? Yes, you yeah, are. You, yeah. Okay. Okay, great. So now I t I'm talking about uh, my family. Uh, my family is interesting because my father's side is a fully Puranakan. The, fa the family came from Banjamasin and then later they transferred to Batavia and to Singapore. And uh, my, my father's great-grandfather, meaning my great-great-grandfather, was the Kapitan, uh, according to my grand-aunts, he was the Kapitan of Banjamasim in the 1960s to 80s. Whereas at the same time, my mother's uh, great-grandfather was the major China of Johor. Uh, actually, they just revived that title this year in Johor. The Sultan revived that title, but it was given to the Chinese who um, were supposed to take control over the overseas Chinese that were in Johor at that time. Uh, and he was um, uh, in charge of the Gambia, the pepper and the opium farms in Johor with, in a joint venture with the Sultan. So that was my, my two uh, great, great grandfathers. Now, um, if you look here, you can see the difference in the family on the right. Uh, my mother's side, they're very Chinese. They came from uh, Suatau, uh, Chaozhou. Uh, they were Deju family. And uh, my father's side was very Western. And this photo was taken in 1909, uh, before, um, you know, before Republican China was established. So it was still the Qing dynasty, but they already have cut off their queues. So they were very advanced for their time. And the ladies, uh, according my grand aunt is here, I think you can't see my pointer, but the second from the left is my grand aunt whom I saw and she she was 11 then and she said that um, uh, this was their clothing for uh, Sunday school and they all went to Sunday school and were taught English at the Sunday school. So this was very revolutionary for that time and this was the Peranakan family that I grew up with. So here is my, my great grandmother and my grand aunts this is the grand aunt you saw just now this was something sometime before the 1920s it was taken in singapore and you can see the bajus that they wear unfortunately at that time there was no colored photos so um, interestingly when i put this photo on facebook a friend of mine uh, decided to color it and this was the result it, it's quite attractive i think but this was done without understanding what was the color matching in those days. And in the past, I had no idea how one would match um, the sarong kabayas or the baju panjangs with the sarongs. And later, when I had to do a proposal for the National Palace Museum Southern Branch in Taiwan, they wanted a collection of Puranakan um, bajus. And I recommended them some. And I realized that my matching was all wrong. So I had to redo my proposal uh, with some advisors. So, for example, my great grandmother should not be with a blue, with a blue sarong if she has this orange um, baju panjang. And according to her age, this orange color is too bright. It should be a dark brown orange with a reddish sarong, according to some of the elders in the Puranakan society. So you can see the matching here. Uh, this is how they match in black and white. Now we have no idea what the colors of the clothes are but we have you know the material culture has left behind some examples in different collections so these baju panjangs when they are red they are usually matched with reddish or purplish um, sarongs and when they, they are uh, bluish this is a blue brown they are matched with the blue brown sarong and the one on the extreme right is a no-no you can't match the blue 
with an orange uh, uh, baju panjang. So it has to be a kind of reddish um, batik. So this is kind of unstated. Nobody has really written this down, but it's a tradition that has passed down uh, through the different Peranakan families. Uh, so this is what I learned when I did my proposal. So here is my grandmother. Um, interestingly, her house was on Orchard Road, where the, um, I think, um, Design Orchard is right now. It's diagonally across uh, the Mandarin Hotel on Orchard Road. And there were two main halls. We had two reception halls. One, the one on the right was formal and the one on the left was informal. So you can see the formal one is all black wood, mother of pearl furniture. And this one is on teak wood, is the informal. And this was to celebrate my grandmother's uh, birthday. And my grandmother, even though she comes from a traditional Chinese family, she was wearing sarong kabaya. I think it looked more prestigious um, than the Chinese samfu at that time. And it was very comfortable for her. So I never saw her in anything but sarong kabaya. And that's where I first got my impressions for sarong kabayas and the matching. And here it was the, our old house. I remember these stairs we had to go up. It, the house had three stories and it was, um, we had two courtyards. In fact, three, uh, three courtyards. So it's pretty long. Uh, and then they would, you know, gather together. Uh, and uh, some, my, my, um, my mother's fourth um, uncle married a Peranakan, so she would be dressed in uh, sarong kabaya. So when we see them play cards, some would be dressed Chinese and some would be dressed in uh, Nonya clothing. So this is my family in, on Orchard Road for a family gathering. There, there used to be like almost 200 uh, people living in the same house because she had, my grandmother had seven sons and all the sons lived in the house with their families and the daughters who were unmarried also lived in the house. And then we had, you know, servants and cooks and, and caretakers in the house as well who lived in. So here is an interesting picture of our, um, my two families, my mother's family, the, the Teju family here, uh, this is my grand in my grand uncle's house. You can see that they're using the tokui with the uh, teju embroidery. Uh, but interestingly, they don't use the chanap. The chanap is used by my father's family. You can see here the chanap here is the gold carving with the papaya flowers uh, for sacrifice that they use. And these come from teju. They come from Swatao. So it's very interesting that the Peranakans would work. Uh, you know, import things from Swatao, but the Swatao people themselves don't use it. So there's an um, interchange um, of different, uh, the two cultures here. And this is my, my grand aunt and my grandmother, always in uh, Sarong Kabaya or Baju Panjang. And she um, lived on, she comes from the Tan uh, Chin Bun family uh, on Dublin Road. The, her altar table now is in the Peranakan Museum. So uh, it's quite a, it was quite a prestigious family. That our family was divided in the Tan family was divided into uh, four four families because there were four brothers that remained in Singapore. The rest returned to China, and this is how my grandmother would dress. And you can see, um, in those days, it was kind of like this was probably like a pekalongan. It looks a little like a pekalongan sarong. And here in the middle, she's wearing a batik hokutai which was influenced by the Japanese. And this was immediately after the Japanese war in 1947, because my cousin here, uh, he, he, I wasn't born yet, right? So this is my grandmother. And I think she's wearing a, a, what looks like a Tiga Nigri. But if you observe, most of the kabayas are light colored on with a multicolored or dark colored sarong. And um, if you come here, you can see my aunt. Uh, here she has uh, something like a tiga nigri and my grandmother is wearing like a nitik. Nitik is done by the Arabs, it's from Pakolongan, it's done with dots. Okay, so again with light um, kabayas. This is my aunt. She married uh, my second aunt, my, my mother's second sister, and she married a Peranakan uh, man. So she always dressed in sarong kabayas, although she was from a Teju family. So again, my grandmother in the center wearing a sarong kabaya. And this is when I first arrived in uh, Singapore from the from New York. Uh, we took the Queen Mary over and we landed in 1956. And my grandmother was so happy to see me. And you can see the Peranakan setting behind, even though she comes from a traditional Chinese family. 
and this is the kabayas. Uh, a lot of them were the, the everyday kabaya, kabaya biku that she wore. And here is my paternal grandmother. Uh, she uh, lived in the Malay Kampong, but occasionally she would visit our Orchard Road house and come to look after me. My father lived ex uh, directly uh, uh, next to my mother's house on Orchard Road. Uh, but all those buildings have been pulled down. And this is my aunt. And you can see her sarong. It's very interesting. In the old days, um, most of them didn't use um, sarong jahit. It was the sarong lepas, the open sarong that was folded. You can tell from this line here. Okay. And this is a kabaya bhikkhu. And of course, uh, the influence came onto my mother. When we went to visit the Prime Minister of Israel on a state visit, um, my mother wore a, a sarong kabaya. And this was during his birthday. So he invited uh, Menachem Begin, the Prime Minister of Israel, when he invited us. My mother said she had to represent Singapore. So she wore this um, silk foil um, uh, a purple kabaya. And you can see it's a 1960s style, very tight-waisted, like the Saloma period, and very short. They call it... Uh, Kabaya pende, but there is a strong contrast in color. A dark purple sarong with a lighter patterned purple um, a kabaya. So I think uh, I learned the most was when the Peranaka Museum had this wonderful exhibition of uh, sarong kabayas from the Lee Kip Lee collection. And after the show, I think they donated the kabayas to the museum. And I think the museum was extremely fortunate. But I learned a lot in terms of matching because they did a lot of research and very careful pairing of the kabaya and sarong. Look at this set, right? It's a pale orange that has the color pickups from the, the sarongs. Um, but these are the more, um, these are the European uh, laced um, kabayas where you have lots of lace. Uh, I think this type of matching is much safer because uh, white can go with anything. So. Um, please take note, there is this standard style that I'm introducing. Of course, it's my standard, but it's also a standard that I've observed from books and from how people uh, wore their sarong kabayas. That when you want to play safe and won't go wrong in the, and don't go wrong in the matching, the best is use a white kabaya. Okay? If you want, you can use a light-colored monotone kabaya. The most challenging is when you have a patterned kabaya and a patterned sarong. So we'll see later how that is matched, but it's, a lot of people go wrong when they do that. So um, uh, when, when I saw the Peter Lee collection, you know, I, I told Peter, I asked Peter how, you know, he matched his Saro Kabayas. He said, with a lot of research, you've got to look through all the old prints and old photographs and check it out. Um, because sometimes we, we may, uh, you know, make certain mistakes that we are not aware of. So when I matched the Baju Panjang, in the old days, not everything was batik and not everything was lace, right? Uh, imported prints, Chetakan, right, was very uh, popular. They had prints on cotton and prints on Casarubia. Um, and so in the old prints from, from the Dutch period, you can see um, early 20th century, these ladies uh, wearing the printed um, Baju Panjang with the blue sarong. So I, I have two of them. So I matched it this way. I didn't have a white uh, sapu tangan or handkerchief, so I used a colored one here to get this matching. And some, uh, uh, it was lucky. I, I was lucky. I had the, exactly the same spittoon, so I matched the spittoon to go with this. Um, so this one is another one with a, a coromandel uh, South Indian print uh, from the coromandel coast. And then uh, here you, she has an exceptionally long selendang. And in the old days. These selendangs come from Jambi. It's very hard to get them now because nowadays the selendangs are short. Uh, but uh, from in the late 19th century to early 20th century, you have these long selendangs um, that you can wear uh, one across the shoulder and then the other across the arm like in the photo here. So this is how I matched this uh, set. And uh, then of course, uh, we, I had to look at a lot of these old photos to see how you know the, the length of the, the proportions um the colors the, the patterns colors you cannot because it's black and white um and here also i i try to look at uh old photos of the, the malay people um apparently there are not as many photos of malay people in, in baju uh, malayu and saro kabayas 
as they are in Chinese. Um, it, it was in the tradition of the Peranakan, the Peranakans, to take a lot of photographs and record uh, their, their, their family history much more than the, the Malay society. So, uh, but I try to find as many as I can. And um, in the 1960s, there, be, there became, um, uh, the, the photographs became more prevalent and more abundant um, from the Malay society because uh, this was the period where uh, people were more relaxed. They, they, were, they were wear really fashionable dresses and kabayas and they were, you know, perm all, you can see all their hairs are perm. Uh, they would go to nightclubs. Uh, they would go and see uh, P. Rabli or Saloma shows. And you can see they dressed almost like Saloma, very tight-waisted kabayas. Some of them were, wore corsets. And they would use batiks that the Paranaka Nonyas also used. For example, um, in the 50s and 60s, this uh, cobweb batik was very famous among the Paranakans. And you can see the Malays wearing it as well. So there was an interchange of um, uh, Chinese Peranakan and Malay uh, sarung kabayas. And you can see here, uh, these, these ladies, you know, in the 1930s, they were wearing these, uh, 1950s, sorry, very tight-waisted kabayas with the tight-fitted sarongs that you don't see nowadays because now most of them are in uh, broader baju kurongs. Uh, the, the sarong kabayas, the kabayas are not as um, tight fitting. And it's very interesting, they will incorporate the latest trends. Uh, for example, this uh, Casarubia kabaya has the print of Haitian or Cuban dancers. So in, in those days at that time, the bars were very popular and the Cuban music was in vogue. So they had that Latin American culture um, seeping in into their bajus. And here I match a dark um, sarong with a lighter kabaya. Uh, and you can tell that the, 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 the nonias love bright colors, so they would choose bright but colored batiks for their matching. And uh, eventually, after the 1960s, the colors for the kabaya started increasing, there were more and more colors. So, um, when the colors started coming in, I thought, you know, did they think of color arithmetic? For example, uh, Piet Mondrian, right? Mondrian, he, when he designed his colors, right? He, he, add, he perceived that each color had different weights. For example, black was very heavy, blue was lighter, red was medium, and white was, and yellow were very light. So if you have, um, you know, too much black, the painting will be lopsided. So he did this color balancing that I think when we match our sound kabayas, we have to have that in mind. So here you have a very white kabaya and a, a darker top. So I put a dark uh, selendang to bring down the top light, bottom heavy effect. Okay. Baba John, we have many questions streaming in right now. So um, do everybody just, just be patient. Yeah. Once we finish this presentation, we will be uh, uh, we'll try to answer all your questions. Continue, please, Baba John. Okay, we'll be mixing and matching and the game begins, right? So I think the easiest match will, is mono, monotone chrome on dark brown. That's the traditional Javanese match. Okay, this was a, a movie about uh, Kartini and her family during the marriage. You can see the monotone with the brown. So it's a tradition that is carried on till now. So I've tried to match monotone like white on colored, uh, white on monotone blue uh, white or multicolors, and that goes very well. So that's one uh, way you can match very easily. Okay, and this I had a fashion show, and I did the same where you have white or multicolored in a uh, two white on sogan brown and white on multicolor. So next, you can see this is white on monotone black with a black selendang. You can use this for funerals actually, uh, as long as the uh, Sang is not in gold. You can have silver or in silver and pearl. And here you have white or multicolored uh, with the lace multicolored Kerouang Salenda. Uh, here again, you have light, light colors, light blue on, on, on blue. Uh, and then you can have a light blue uh, Salenda to match. Okay. So um, I think it's important that we, um, for the Nonias, you have a selection of different colored kabayas in your closet 
so you can always pick and match anytime you want uh, don't just say you know i have two or three kabayas that's enough you know you you have to have the range of the 12 colors and different shades of it for the different matchings okay so this one again is the monotone on brown and black on black that's an easy match okay and this was traditional in java as well and you can see during the parties this is the the Jogja royal family and they match the green with the soga colors and this is the paku alaman family and you can see again it's yellow with the paku alaman uh, brown uh, sogan colors and here you can see the guests also in monotone colors with brown okay each of them is the same and i think i like this one brown on brown it's very elegant and here comes the strong color monotones with colored uh, sarong kabaya so this is green red blue and pink but what happens is when you have um colored uh kabaya you need to have color pickups so the color pickup here you can see even though the color is contrasting is the pink okay the color pickup here is the blue and the color pickup here is the red and the color pickup here is the green so make sure when you match right i mean it's for my standard of matching I mean, a lot of there's no right or wrong to this but i think when you are at a loss you know you can take this um this this uh, structure of matching uh, to help you to make sure that you have color pickup so it, it becomes homogeneous it, can, it becomes a, a united not incongruous okay so a lot of uh, these uh, monotones have color pickups you can see okay and uh, going back actually uh, a lot of these color pickups and color schemes comes from uh, what we see in nature i think the most beautiful art is nature so how how plants flowers match we should always observe and we can use that for our sarong kabaya matching so sometimes when you see a wonderful kabaya don't let it go because you have to be patient and wait the sarong will come maybe you don't have a sarong to match but it will come so i bought this kabaya at first and then after two years this sarong came along and the color the purple and the blues match exactly with my uh kabaya so it became a perfect match so it was a wait for two years so don't you know don't give don't let a good kabaya go when you see one so this is how i match my uh, patterned um kabayas with my pattern sarongs these are the hardest to match okay but again you have to have the same color pickups and there's some contrast because on top is light below is dark here's the same light and dark light and dark but you have the same color pickups on each of these combinations um here again you have color pickups a uh, pattern on pattern which again is the hardest to match but at least the patterns you have the same flower the colors of the flowers and then the selendang uh, with the deep purple matches the purple here it kind of unifies the whole thing here the color pickup is brown and in, on this you have color contrast so color contrast again is a little different from color pickup you have to have the right color contrast so red is a strong color you can match it with black or blue but if you match a uh, red and pink it's going to be quite dangerous May match orange with green uh, so you have here on the left orange and green and on the right red and blue with a blue and red cylinder so these are the um, typical color contrast that is normally uh, visually aesthetically pleasing and here is, is a, another type of matching where I do color contrast and then same colors. So the small one is in the same color scheme, as you can see here on both left, right and left. And then I switch the sarongs to make it a color contrast. And I think it's more challenging and um, visually more exciting to the observer. But you still have to observe the color pickup. So the orange here goes with the mustard yellow here. And then the green and the perchet robon goes with the green of the kabaya. But in, in general, these two are in, in contrast. So this kabaya is pink and then the sarong is green, but they have the, the orange color seems to match with the orangey pink kabaya. Okay? So that's how I do it. And what do I do with my collection? Um, once um, I, I have an amount of pieces and I do my research and I discover like the origin and connections I, I often share 
about my new discoveries with people. And this is in Singapore, in Thailand, in Malaysia, and in, in Holland, where I shared about my Sarong Kabaya discoveries. And often when guests come to my house, I like to do Instagram shots with them. So this is my sister, my friend from Bangkok, my friends from Malaysia and my friend from Taiwan. Uh, when they come to my house, we have so much fun uh, wearing these Sarong Kabayas and matching. And I also have fashion shows where I do uh, Sarong Kabaya matching. And uh, here is another fashion show I had. My friend was uh, featuring Oscar de la Renta. So I use Oscar de la Renta for a new way of matching Sarong Kabaya. So the Kabaya is like a short a Kabaya pendek, which is a jacket, a, a couche a linen jacket, green jacket with um, a, a Sarong that has the green pickup. Okay. Uh, and so, you know, you ask, is that, a, is that definitely a standard? Um, for me, it is because I'm very sensitive to color and style and cut, right? So when I see certain things, sometimes I will call it an eyesore. Maybe to others, it isn't. So I, I would like to share some of what I feel is an eyesore. This was, this was in um, a, a Tarun Kabaya uh, exhibit in the shopping center called Fahrenheit in, the, in KL. And you can see the, the brown kabaya here on the right is so strong, it's matched with the pink sarong, right? It's so overpowering that you, you don't see it as a homogeneous uh, 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 combination, but something that's rather incongruous. In the other one, the sarong kabaya behind, right? The pink flowers kind of jump out at you and then the sarong is lost, right? And the, the one on the extreme left, you see the white is so powerful and then the sarong the color pickups don't really work in, in this um, combination. So to me, these um, the, the, the uh, blending is not as smooth, I think. Um, and you can see here, when you put them in close-ups, right, they all kind of clash, the kabayas and the sarongs. And for me, it's um, not aesthetically pleasing. And here also, according to the laws and taboos, right, the slow block in um, which are these uh, triangle patterns in squares are usually worn for funerals, right? So this lady is wearing one for a wedding, which actually for people who know is rather impolite. So you have to observe some of the norms and taboos that is often unwritten. Uh, here is a um, truntum with the stars. And this is a symbol of love. And this, you know, to us black, and browns are like funeral colors, right? But this is actually worn in Indonesia for weddings. The bride and bride, the bride's uh, parents would wear this uh, batik chuntum because it represents love. The stars, you know, are the, the diligence of the Sultan's wife when she did these uh, stars one by one. And for her diligence, he renewed his love with her. So that's why it's a symbol of love. And, um, you know, when you wear the um, Tuaha sarongs, right? These are the green sarongs for the third year of the uh, of morning. So they are not so um, restricted. You can wear it with pattern to bias, but make sure that you don't wear gold jewelry with it. Um, you'll be fine. Uh, as long as your chrome sans are silver or you use with pearl, um, this will be in line with um, the, the, the morning, uh, the light morning uh, attire. Okay, so. Uh, I think these four ladies are beautifully matched. Uh, this is Grace Wong, my friend. She went to a party and she showed me this photo. I said, wow, all the ladies match really well uh, with the color contrast and with the color pickups you can see here. And here's my friend Tina Tan, a uh, um, very prominent uh, Peranakan lady from Singapore. And almost every time she goes out, she matches beautifully, right? Uh, you can see uh, the color pickups when it's the same color, she has nice color contrast with the flowers and here the color pickups in the purple and then this is um, brown and uh, yellow orange which is a nice color contrast and also her friend with the uh, red uh, orange red with orange sarong is a nice color contrast so this is in singapore so tina told me that it's not all the time she does the correct matching look look at this um, on the right, she's with a friend and she has a beautiful kabaya. Usually the kabaya patterns are on the edge, right? So this is in the center, which is good because it's a break from the very floral sarong. But Tina told me that when she went to a party, Benjamin Sack told her she had her sarong 
uh, the bale. Is the the top is down and the flowers tips buds are here, and so she had to quickly go to the restroom. Tina told me I could use this story, you know, to warn other Peranakans when they wear their sarongs in a hurry, make sure they get their their top and bottom correct. So she had to go to the the restroom to change it and put it back the right way. Okay. So be careful, ladies, when you you match your sarong for bias. You could get the right color, but you could get it upside down. Okay. And this is a party at Eunice uh, Kyo's uh, uh, birthday, uh, which I attended, and wonderful. Um, all the ladies came dressed to kill, and all of them tried their hardest to match in the correct way. Uh, but for me, there I have certain favorites. This is Dawn Marie. I think hers is the most challenging because she has the color contrast. Uh, but there's also the color pickup in the orange, and she has let the green become like a break. So visually, it's not just one color orange, but the nice, your eyes can rest on the orange and then go back on the green and then go back to the orange. Okay, where this um, is beautiful, all purple, but it's a, a safer way of matching. And I think the person who won the prize for the best matching was Eunice herself. She uh, had this beautiful sar uh, kabaya made in the orange tone and matched it with a bright orange uh, sarong. So the color um, uh, scheme is about the same, but the intensity of color is different. So you can do this kind of matching orange on orange, but with different intensity. And here is a party, a sarong kabaya party, a Puranakan ball in Penang, which I attended. And I think all the ladies took a lot of trouble to match my favorite is this lady in orange you can see how she matches with the dark green and orange here um, it's, it goes well smoothly but even the contrasting colors are quite well done and another favorite was mine of mine is uh, Bettina Chua which she um, where she dressed in a very um, revolutionary style but still I can say it's Peranakan because it's a sarong kabaya although it's kabaya labu which is uh, much longer and with a sarong but tied in a knot from the waist in, uh, from the, the 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 breast instead of the, the waist so you have this uh, new combination or new style of tying the sarong kabaya but in a very aesthetic um in a very aesthetic way okay we're going to end soon and these are my sarong kabaya heroes um julia de silva she does the, the safe uh, white and dark blue and then my friend Taffy from Taiwan, uh, Lillian Tong, in a light blue with a pink, but with light blue color pickups. And Eunice, which is very challenging because she has a very complex uh, kabaya with multi colors, but is very light in contrast with her green uh, sarong, uh, sarong and Sasha, which is uh, where she used brown and green sharp contrast, but uh, very uh, uh, with color coordinates, right? Which makes it aesthetically pleasing. Okay, here is my combination. I go more modern. I use um, a sash by Onyata uh, uh, Gallery uh, Tokokita. Uh, and then I, I use contemporary Malaysian batiks. Here you can see the different designers. And um, in uh, these are some of the designers that I admire. And I, can, I think you can use some of his batiks, Shram Abu Bakar, for your sarong kabayas. And... Um, here are other designers, Fern and Onyata, and they also have their own combinations and their kibayas, you can see, becomes a very broad sleeve, more Japanese style. And here is um, Onyata's recent matching. Uh, it's very traditional, but instead of the Kongsang, she uses a sash. And, um, you know, you don't have to, you know, the family, Hari Raya family photo doesn't have to have the same sarong pattern, but if you have it in the same color scheme, it's quite refreshing to look at and it's still a unified family in terms of pattern and color um, here you can see um, batik tektura okay she's captured the soul of i think the traditional batiks in that her patterns are completely modern but she still has her kapala here and the badan here so this is a traditional format which she has kept and here is the queen of malaysia herself she designs the new batiks with indian wood blocks and uh, with a drawing on her uh, with her own freehand drawing okay and here is Ruth Gahara another favorite of mine he does uh, batik shirts for men and also sarong kabayas for ladies um, okay John I think we've got to spend some time with the questions because we're running out of time and we're going to I'm go done. on with the I'm next done. program yeah. oh excellent fantastic so job the latest style in Singapore instead of just wearing shirts 
uh, Peranakan men could wear, you know, tops Chinese or Western or, or Javanese and match it with sarongs like um, Haris Z uh, Zaidi has done. So he is a wonderful example of how the culture can evolve and uh, be a living culture. Okay, so thank you oh, very wow. much. Oh, wow. Yeah. So <laughs> Excellent timing, John. <laughs> in the top. Boom, boom, boom. Okay, let, let's you, quickly. Thank you, Papa John. Thank yeah. you so much. Uh, we need to take on some questions here. And I think uh, we we'll probably we can start off with uh, a question here about Tiganagri. What's Tiganagri? Uh, Tiganagri is a batik that uses three main colors. Uh, originally, it was thought that these three main colors came from different places. Some of the colors did, but it wasn't uh, necessary to make the batiks in the three places. They could get the dyes and import it. It was done in central Java rather than in uh, north coast Java. So it has typical orange, brown color, blue and red. Those are the three main colors. That's why it's called Tiganigi. And it was made by a specific family in central Java. There was a picture about uh, about your mom wearing that, you know, the batik andike kebaya uh, and not uh, putting on a kronsang. Can you explain uh, why so? It's the Javanese style of batik uh, putu baru, where you have a centerpiece that you you use, you have buttons, so you don't need the krongsang. And in Java, sometimes they only use one krongsang, right? And, you know, um, when when I talk about sarong kabayas, um, it's not necessary, for me, it's not necessary to wear krongsangs and to be so traditional, uh, because, uh, like I showed you, you can use a sash, right? You still have the sarong kabaya effect. Um, it, it's the spirit of the sarong kebaya rather than the outward form. Um, a lot of us try to go back to our grandparents and say, oh, to be Peranakan, you have to dress exactly like them. But that's dead culture. It's not evolving, right? So today, you know, we don't have time to pin on the grong sang. We just put on a sash because um, <laughs> times have changed. So we have to follow the change. And in the old days too, right? Remember in the old days, the, 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 the kabayas were very long and they're usually light colors. By the 60s and 70s, the kabayas became short and bright colors. So that was the change too. They were not exactly like their ancestors. So I think, um, you know, we should rejoice in the fact that our Pranakan culture is evolving and changing. We have time for one more last question, uh, Baba John. That is, um, can we use a wheel, color wheel as a guide for color matching? Yeah, why not? Yes. Uh, but you know, I, I, I sometimes that can be uh, quite static. Um, you know, use that, but still go on your own feeling, right? Uh, look at look at nature and look at other people as they dress, and then record in your mind what pleases you and use it use it for your own uh, color combination. Well, thank you so much, Baba John, for your elucidation about how to match the sarong and the kabaya. Uh, we look forward to have you again next time on any other platforms. And uh, with that, on behalf of the organizer, we want to say thank you very much for uh, for joining us this afternoon. And having said so, I'd like to hand the session back to Baba Elvin. Oh, Come here. very oh, much, please. Cedric, Sama John. Thank you so much for that wonderful session. Thank you. Well, everybody. <laughs> We have come to the end of this program, but do join us for the next presentation. It's happening at 3 p.m. It's called Money Memories, Peranakan Beating for Modern Times with Angeline Kong and Noreen Chan at Katong Antique House, Singapore. Thank you for joining us here at our virtually Peranakan Fest 2021. Let's keep our culture and our spirit strong. Have a great day, everybody.